This morning, our emphasis is on our celebration of Thanksgiving next Thursday. And so we read two passages of scripture that deal with thankfulness. The first is from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. When Jesus asked, where are there not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, go, get up, and be on your way. Your faith has made you well. Our second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Paul has invited the Corinthian church to share in an offering for the poor and the oppressed churches uh, in, by Jerusalem and also uh, throughout the rest of the Roman world. Let us then hear God's word. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and an increase of the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of the ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Although many countries and cultures have some kind of ceremony for celebrating their blessings. No one celebrates Thanksgiving quite like those of us in North America, especially in the U.S., and that's for good reason. Few people on earth have as much for which to be thankful, even in these difficult times. Recently, I came upon a statistic that said that most of those who are in the bottom 5% economically in our country would still be considered in the top 10% of the world's economy. Ted Koppel, former Nightline host for 25 years on ABC, migrated to the United States from England in his early teen years. The Koppels were originally from Germany, but moved to England just before World War II. They had lived through food rationing and had known scarcity and desperation that accompanies war. So a few years later, when young Ted heard a jingle on the radio about antacids that could heal the pain of overeating, he began to cry. He couldn't imagine that he now lived in a country, the U.S., where people had problems with eating and drinking too much. He knew that in his native countries, there were still people scrambling to get enough food to feed their families. Remember that 
on Thanksgiving Day as you partake of whatever food you have. We have so much. Newcomers to this country are more conscious of our blessings than many of us who take them for granted. Those newcomers have often done without things we take for granted. One set of my great-grandparents spent their last cent to pay for their passage to the U.S. And many of your forebearers came here because of famine or civil war or unrest from which they were fleeing, often with only the clothes they were wearing. The Reverend Enrico uh, Serratorio has worked with numerous Italian immigrants in his ministry, and he knows how easy it is for things to get garbled in translation because they have trouble with the language and understanding some of our customs. One day he was discussing Thanksgiving with an Italian immigrant who thought he understood this American holiday perfectly. You see, in Italian, the word for turkey is tachin. This immigrant announced that Americans celebrate Tatchin's Giving Day. He went on to say that this is the day in which Americans give away turkeys. Well, he's half right. Many good people and numerous social service agencies give away turkeys for Thanksgiving Day. But Thanksgiving is much, much more than a national holiday set aside just to celebrate the eating of a big bird. For most of us, of course, our Thanksgiving holiday lasts longer than one day. We may get together with relatives on numerous days, and theoretically it can last a long time as there are still leftovers in the fridge. Michael Morris jokes with this memorable pun, if somebody is addicted to eating Thanksgiving leftovers, can he quit cold turkey? I have nothing against turkey and all the good stuff that goes along with it. But that's not our central focus when we celebrate on Thanksgiving Day. And contrary to all the sales flyers that are going to be stuffed into newspapers and come uh, you know, uh, at the end of the week and things appearing on the internet, Thanksgiving is not about shopping either or about Black Friday kind of events. Over the next few weeks, advertisers will spend billions of dollars trying to convince us that our holidays won't be complete unless we buy their product, be it applesauce, power tools, um, canned pumpkin, or pantyhose. It's amazing to contemplate how, many money, how much money, resources, and efforts will be invested into making us feel discontented with our lives, as if we're missing something. We can easily become cynical about the holidays if we focus too much on the commercial aspects. It reminds me of an old story about a newsboy standing on the corner with a stack of newspapers yelling, read all about it, 50 people swindled, 50 people swindled. Curiously, uh, a man walked over, bought a paper and checked the front page. Finding nothing, he said, there's nothing here about 50 people being swindled. The newsboy ignored him and went on calling out, read all about it, 51 people swindled. A stranger to our culture could fall victim to some absurd ideas about the meaning of our holidays. Thanksgiving is about far more than eating turkey, watching football, or getting a head start on your Christmas shopping. St. Paul knew about Thanksgiving, even though he did not live in a culture that celebrated Thanksgiving Day. Paul was continually giving thanks. He had a, a, a gratitude attitude. But St. Paul did not believe that gratitude was a solitary attribute for the believer. Gratitude is to be linked to caring for others. If God has blessed us, then we should be seeking to bless others. In our lesson from second, the second epistle, to the Corinthian church. He's writing to believers, asking them to take up a collection to give to their poor brothers and sisters in impoverished and persecuted churches. He knows that the Corinthians want to hang on to their money just as much as we do ours today. So in order to sell his plan, he reminds them 
of the blessings God has poured out on them. We've already read our text, but Eugene Peterson, in his free-flowing translation of the Bible called The Message, has uh, a different uh, understanding that uh, brings out some things that maybe we weren't paying attention to. So he translates 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 15 like this. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. God can pour on the blessings in astonishing ways that you need to be ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do the deeds that need to be done. As one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. This most generous God has given seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals. And he's more extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Carrying out this social relief work involves far more than helping meet the bare needs of poor Christians. It also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgivings to God. This relief offering is a prod to live at your very best, showing your gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters, and really toward everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagant of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession for whatever you need. Thank God for this gift, his gift. No language can praise it enough. This is quite a remarkable passage of scripture. What it says is that gratitude and generosity feed on each other. Find a person who is truly grateful and you will find a person who is generous. Find a person who is generous and you will find a person who is grateful. This is to say that Thanksgiving is a constantly renewed resource. Thanksgiving produces generosity. Generosity brings a sense of abundance into our lives, which increases our gratitude. We're used to thinking in terms of scarcity, not abundance. There's never enough to go around. News reports warn us that if we don't exercise careful stewardship of our natural resources, we're going to run out of clean water, food, oil, land, etc., Many of us are haunted by the fear that we are just a few paychecks away from falling through the cracks. We're more conscious of our scarcity than our abundance. There's never enough time to get everything done. Never enough money to make us feel truly secure. Never enough love for us to get our fill. You've got to hold on to what you have. But just as the season of Thanksgiving is a time to celebrate our abundance, the spirit of Thanksgiving creates in us an abundant mindset. When we focus on the positives in our lives, we feel thankful. The more thankful we feel, the more joyful we feel. And joy is contagious. It overflows. We want to share it with others. And we're never too young to put this lesson into practice. Just ask a woman by the name of Linda McCullough uh, Moore, the mother of two young sons. The refrigerator in the Moore's household has pictures on it of a cow and two goats. Nothing unusual, perhaps. Most of us have odd stuff hanging on our refrigerator door. What is unusual about the Moore household is that the cow's name underneath the picture is Internet. The goats are also named after video games. One night, Linda Moore was watching TV with her two young sons when they saw an ad for an overseas charity for children. 
According to the ad, $20 would feed one child for a month. Moore mentioned to her sons that they had planned on spending $20 per month on faster internet service. Then she asked her boys to decide where the money should go. They voted unanimously for the children's charity. After that, Moore saw new ways to help her boys develop a spirit of giving to others. Each time they wanted to make a purchase, she asked them to weigh it against spending money to char- sending money to charity. She obtained a, a catalog for a charity, the Heifer Project, that gives farm animals to people in impoverished areas. The animals can be used for meat, milk, eggs, leather. And the boys tend to respond positively. So instead of faster internet, internet they have a picture of a cow on their refrigerator, And instead of video games, they have pictures of goats. Did the boys resent their emphasis on helping others? Well, if so, they didn't for long because they don't show it in their lives. In fact, the boys were so excited by this opportunity that they began picking up odd jobs around the neighborhood in order to raise money to give more. The Moore family proves the second principle that enriches our lives. Thanksgiving reaches completion when we share our blessings with others. Earlier we talked about how joy is contagious. It has to be passed on to others. When we share our blessings, we create thankfulness and joy in other people. And those people praise God for our obedience, and they pray God's blessing on our lives. And God blesses us in response to their prayers. And the thankfulness and joy start all over again. When a woman by the name of Amanda was a child, she dreamed of owning a brand new purple bicycle. She had seen one in an ad and she was just attracted to it. She worked at odd jobs and saved up every penny in order to buy herself that perfect purple purple bicycle. And every night she prayed for that perfect, perfect purple bicycle. But one day, Amanda's Sunday school teacher told the class about a missionary son in Chile who had contracted hepatitis. The teacher wanted the class to buy the boy something to cheer him up. The children voted to buy the missionary's son a bicycle because it was something he really needed. Amanda's little heart broke at the thought of giving up on her bicycle money, but she knew that the missionary's son needed it more than she did. So she gave every hard-earned dollar to the Sunday school teacher for the project. Years later, Amanda fell in love with a college classmate named Philip. Amanda and Philip's families came together for a big dinner to celebrate their children's engagement. And after the family dinner, Philip's parents shared stories from their years serving as missionaries overseas. One of their hardest times, they recall, was when the family fell ill while they were serving in of all places, Chile. Philip had contracted hepatitis, and he was the sickest of the bunch. What joy he experienced when he received a brand new bicycle from the generous kids back in the U.S. Amanda cried as she realized that her sacrifice of her bicycle money had gone to bless the life of her future husband. Who knows the effect your thankfulness and subsequent giving will have on the lives of others and even on yourself. God set up this remarkable system of joy and blessing and gratitude and generosity, giving and receiving, and then God backs it up with a lifetime guarantee. Gratitude and generosity feed on one another. Give out of gratitude and your sense of gratitude will continue to grow. It's an important and time-tested principle of Christian living. No wonder Paul wrote, Thank God for this gift, his gift. No language can praise it enough. So jumpstart the joy cycle in your life today by looking for ways to share your blessing with others. So this Thanksgiving, even though it has been a difficult time for many and your family gatherings may be much smaller, Look at all the blessings of God in your life. And in gratitude, allow Christ to flow out of your heart and into the lives of others. Let us pray. God, our Father, as we think about the abundance of what you have brought into our lives, even those of us who seem to have little often have received 
enough to get by day by day. May we understand that in your giving of your greatest gift, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary, that you opened up all of eternity for those of us who believe in his name. We pray that you would help us understand that we have been blessed and that we have opportunities to bless other people. And we also pray, Father, that we would understand that sometimes those blessings, like happened in the life of Amanda, will come back and touch us personally in ways we never experienced. New friendships are gained. New ways of understanding uh, things in the world are given to us. Whatever it may be, help us understand that blessings given often bless in return. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.